The passage is this, Del Inferno, Canto 23, 25-27. And he, If I were made of leaded glass, thine outward image I should not attract sooner to me than I imprint the inner. Translation by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Here, Virgil, with reference to the power he had of reading the thoughts of his companion, says to Dante, If I were of leaded glass, meaning, if I were glass covered at the back with lead so that I was a mirror, I should not draw thy outward image to me more readily than I gain thy inner one, meaning, than now I know your thoughts. It seems then to me that the true simple word to represent the Greek, and the most literal as well by which to translate it, is the verb mirror, when the sentence so far would run like this, but we all with unveiled face mirroring the glory of the Lord. I must now go on to unfold the idea at work in the heart of the apostle, for the mere correctness of a translation is nothing, except it bring us something deeper, or at least some fresher insight. With him who cares for the words apart from what the writer meant them to convey, I have nothing to do. He must cease to pass for a man, and begin to be a man indeed, on the way to be a live soul, before I can desire his intercourse. The prophet apostle seems to me, then, to say, We all, with clear vision of the Lord, mirroring in our hearts his glory, even as a mirror would take into itself his face, are thereby changed into his likeness, his glory working our glory, by the present power in our inmost being of the Lord, the Spirit. Our mirroring of Christ, then, is one with the presence of his Spirit in us. The idea, you see, is not the reflection the radiating of the light of Christ on others, though that were a figure lawful enough, but the taking into and having in us him working to the changing of us. That the thing signified transcends the sign, outreaches the figure, is no discovery. The thing figured always belongs to a higher stratum, to which the simile serves but as a ladder. When the climber has reached it, he then unto the ladder turns his back. It is but according to the law of symbol that the thing symbolized by the mirror should have properties far beyond those of leaded glass or polished metal. Seeing it is a live soul understanding that which it takes into its deeps, holding it and conscious of what it holds. It mirrors by its will to hold in its mirror. Unlike its symbol, it can hold not merely the outward visual resemblance, but the inward likeness of the person revealed by it. It is open to the influences of that which it embraces, and is capable of active cooperation with them. The mirror and the thing mirrored are of one origin in nature, and in closest relation to each other. Paul's idea is that when we take into our understanding, our heart, our conscious, our being, the glory of God, namely Jesus Christ, as he shows himself to our eyes, our hearts, our consciences, he works upon us and will keep working till we are changed to the very likeness we have thus mirrored in us. For with his likeness he comes himself and dwells in us. He will work until the same likeness is wrought out and perfected in us, the image, namely, of the humanity of God, in which image we were made at first but which could never be developed in us except by the indwelling of the perfect likeness. By the power of Christ thus received and at home in us, we are changed, the glory in him becoming glory in us, his glory changing us to glory. But we must beware of receiving this or any symbol after the flesh, beware of interpreting it in any fashion that partakes of the character of the mere physical, psychical, or spiritual mechanical. The symbol deals with things far beyond the deepest region whence symbols can be drawn. The indwelling of Jesus in the soul of man, who shall declare? But let us note this, that the dwelling of Jesus in us 
is the power of the spirit of god upon us for the lord is that spirit and the lord dwelling in us we are changed even as from the lord the spirit when we think christ christ comes when we receive his image into our spiritual mirror he enters with it our thought is not cut off from his our open receiving thought is his door to come in when our hearts turn to him that is opening the door to him that is holding up our mirror to him then he comes in not by our thought only not in our idea only but he comes himself and of his own will comes in as we could not take him but as he can come and we receive him enabled to receive by his very coming the one welcome guest of the whole universe thus the lord the spirit becomes the soul of our souls becomes spiritually what he always was creatively and as our spirit informs gives shape to our bodies in like manner his soul informs gives shape to our souls in this there is nothing unnatural nothing at conflict with our being it is but that the deeper soul that willed and wills our souls rises up the infinite life into the self we call i and me but which lives immediately from him and is his very own property in nature unspeakably more his than ours this deeper creative soul working on and with his creation upon higher levels makes the i and me more and more his and himself more and more ours until at length the glory of our existence flashes upon us we face full to the sun that enlightens what it sent forth and know ourselves alive with an infinite life even the life of the father know that our existence is not the moonlight of a mere consciousness of being but the sun glory of a life justified by having become one with its origin thinking and feeling with the primal sun of life from whom it was dropped away that it might know and bethink itself and return to circle forever in exultant harmony around him then indeed we are then indeed we have life the life of jesus has through light become life in us the glory of god in the face of jesus mirrored in our hearts has made us alive we are one with god for ever and ever what less than such a splendor of hope would be worthy the revelation of jesus filled with the soul of their father men shall inherit the glory of their father filled with themselves they cast him out and rot the company of the lord soul to soul is that which saves with life his life of god devotion the souls of his brethren no other saving can save them they must receive the son and through the son the father what it cost the son to get so near to us that we could say come in is the story of his life he stands at the door and knocks and when we open to him he comes in and dwells with us and we are transformed to the same image of truth and purity and heavenly childhood where power dwells there is no force where the spirit lord is there is liberty the lord jesus by free potent communion with their inmost being will change his obedient brethren till in every thought and impulse they are good like him unselfish neighborly brotherly like him loving the father perfectly like him ready to die for the truth like him caring like him for nothing in the universe but the will of god which is love harmony liberty beauty and joy i do not know if we may call this 
having life in ourselves. But it is the waking up, the perfecting in us of the divine life inherited from our Father in heaven, who made us in his own image, whose nature remains in us and makes it the deepest reproach to a man that he has neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. He who would thus live must, as a mirror draws into its bosom an outward glory, receive into his heart of heart the inward glory of Jesus Christ, the truth.